Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Arastas Mulinge from Kemri, and I'm going to present uh, this study on behalf of Zipporah Gitao and Christina, who, Christina, who is uh, away in the US. Zipporah is with us. And also on behalf of the other consortium members, Dr. Odongo is with us and Hebard. Uh, this study is on One Health studies at Human Animal Environment Interface in the Oloisokut Conservancy in Narrow County. Um, this conservancy uh, provides a, a good platform to apply One Health because um, the people and the animals um, live in the same environment and uh, together with wildlife. So it is really a, a good environment for us to conduct one of the studies. Um, according to the definition of One Health, it is an integrative effort of multiple disciplines working locally, nationally, globally, to attain optimal health for people, animals, and the environment. And in Kenya, in the year 2012, um, the One Health program was initiated, and there followed the creation of the Zoonotic Disease Unit under the Minister of Health. Um, and this was done in collaboration with several ministries, Minister of Health, Livestock, Environment, where they came up with a five-year plan on implementation of One Health activities in the country. Um, this platform uh, listed uh, um, a number of diseases that were to be considered as priority for implementation of One Health. So back to the conservancy. This conservancy was initiated in the year, in the year 2006. It is located in Transmara West, Narok County. And this is part of the Greater Mara Serengeti ecosystem. Um, the, conservancy, the conservancy has a membership of 109 households. And at the time of sampling, the, the population of livestock was 21,200 cattle, um, 35,850 sheep and goats, 881 dogs. So the activities that we carried out in this conservancy uh, use this one other approach in that we, we did studies on people, animals, and the environment. And the one health approach is the one that considers funding, data correction, analysis, implementation of control interventions, as opposed to separate budget and health professionals working in silos. At the beginning of the project, we, we we started with some incentives given to the community there or in the conservancy. Um, all the dogs were vaccinated against the rabies and um, canine distemper, and they were also dewarmed against intestinal ailments. Later, uh, the community was also treated for soil transmitted ailments. And therefore, samples were collected from the people, from the dogs, livestock, and the wildlife that is currently being uh, collected. Uh, therefore, this study, as I said in the beginning, is composed of three abstracts, one on, on intestinal enemies in dogs, and another one on prevalence of intestinal parasitic infection in humans by Zipporah Gitao, and another one on the knowledge, attitude, and practices by Dr. Christina. So the, during the sampling process, or the, during the sampling exercise, uh, we collected samples from the community. And in, in, in this, during that time, we did the CAP surveys. You could see in the picture, second picture up there, we were doing some of the interviews actually with the people. Uh, later, we did the human study where we collected data from people. Uh, we collected fecal samples for analysis. We collected fecal samples from dogs and uh, samples from blood samples and fecal samples from livestock. The picture down here is, um, and this, this, is, this was an activity that we did in the conservancy because some of the analysis was done in the conservancy office. The study on intestinal illness in dogs, uh, this study was carried out um, in partly in the field and part of it in Cambry. 
and we published a paper entitled A Survey of Intestinal Emmys in Domestic Dogs in a Human Animal Environmental Interface, the Sokut Conservancy in Narok County. So the, we all know how uh, dogs are in terms of their interaction with people. Um, many studies have shown that uh, dogs play a very critical role in the social being of people. And um, besides that, dogs also transmit very important uh, diseases, particularly in this case, uh, parasitic diseases. Uh, of importance to us is uh, cystic echinococcosis. The, 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 picture, the first picture demonstrates how severe uh, cystic, cystic echinococcosis appears in humans, specifically in uh, domestic, uh, in, uh, in um, pastoralist communities. Uh, the second one is the same disease in uh, livestock. Um, it infects mainly the liver and the lungs, but also other body organs, also other organs in the, in the, in the, in the body. The, the picture to the right uh, presents um, what we call the cystic, uh, cystic sarcosis, but mainly um, a presentation of um, tinea and the tigena in livestock. Um, uh, and and this, this, this particular disease is actually of major economic importance, as well as the uh, tinea office, which causes cystic sarcosis in, in, in livestock as well, particularly in sheep, caused by tinea office. And the last picture is um, one of the most important actually neglected diseases in, in, the, in the region. Uh, called synuriosis, uh, the, the, it's a formation of uh, cysts in the brain of small livestock, and it's caused by uh, dog transmitted uh, tapeworm called tinea multiceps. So dogs also transmit further diseases of interest to the people. The first two pictures demonstrate what we call cutaneous larval migrants. This is uh, mainly uh, when people are get, uh, get infected by Ancelostoma species, particularly Brancilesis and the Caninum, they cause um, uh, these cutaneous larval migrants. Um, Toxocara canis, Toxocara catis, from dogs and cats respectively, uh, cause ocular larval migrants, the second picture. You can see a worm in the eye of a patient. Uh, this is caused by dog parasites. Um, and the, 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 the figure below, the, lower, the, the photograph below demonstrates the infection of, uh, of a tapeworm called spirometra species, um, which is uh, transmitted by dogs as well. And it causes a disease we call spagnosis. Um, Cryptosporidium and giardiasis are um, protozoan infections that are very important in um, immunocompromised people, particularly cryptosporidium, and, and uh, uh, dogs transmit these uh, parasites to people and livestock as well. Um, how we did the study, um, we started with the vaccination of uh, dogs against rabies and canine distemper, and the dogs were dewormed. Um, we collected fecal samples from 100 dogs, and the samples were processed uh, in Cambry. Um, these 100 fecal samples represented uh, 76 out of the 109 households in the conservancy. And the pictures there demonstrate the group that did this, this work uh, together with the vaccination. So from this study, um, well, we found out that of the 100 dogs that were examined, 65 of them uh, had at least an infection with one ailment. And we also found out that ukworm was the most common uh, species followed by tinea, uh, followed by spirometra and tinnids and the others in that order. Um, we noticed that of the 76 households that we sampled, 54, 54, uh, 54 households are dogs infected with at least one ailment. Of importance to note here is that the parasites that we detected in dogs are, are of quite uh, great significance in terms of public health. Um, Toxocara species, uh, Toxocara catis and Toxocara canis, um, particularly in this case, uh, Toxocara canis um, cause diseases in humans, as well as uh, the Ukwam species, Tinea species. All these are important parasites can cause zoonosis. 
the, the, the other parasites uh, cause uh, diseases in dogs. Some of them cause very dis severe diseases, like for example, an astrostoma caninum causes bleeding. Um, all these diseases are of importance in terms of the health of the animals. And more importantly, also that uh, the parasites we detected in these dogs, some of them are acquired from wildlife. Uh, for example, Tinea cerearis and Tinea modegi are uh, Tinea species that are acquired from dogs interacting with, with wildlife. When dogs prey in the, in the wild, they come across antelopes, the, the natural, the, 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 the hair from the, from, from the wildlife, and this is how the dogs get infected. From this study, we can conclude that nine, nine genera of intestinal parasites were detected in dogs, and hookworm species were the most uh, common species in dogs. The study also reports uh, the detection of uh, Spirometra teireri as the most, as uh, um, teireri, Diplidium caninum, and Mesostades uh, for the first time in the country. The zoonotic elements found in dogs uh, pose uh, great risk to the people because they are infectious in people. And uh, the, the helmets also reported in this study show a clear, in, in, a clear information that our dogs, the dogs in that conservancy interact uh, with wildlife. And therefore we recommend the control of these elements in, in dogs, humans, and wildlife calls for corroborative efforts from the human, animal, environmental health professionals in the context of One Health. So the next study is the one on um, prevalence of intestinal parasitic infection in humans by Zipora Gitao, who is a, an MSc student in the University of Nairobi, supervised by Dr. Odongo and myself. Um, parasitic infections are, uh, are of great importance in terms of public health because they cause great uh, burden of disease uh, into people. And they are common in areas where, where uh, sanitation is poor and hygiene practices. They are transmitted mainly through fecal oral route, either through food or water, insects, and to some extent uh, through by animals, in the, uh, uh, zoonosis. And the WHO uses the deworming as, as a measure to, to stop these infections. So therefore in Kenya in the year 2012, the, 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 our country started the national school-based deworming program with the aim to reduce infections in, in people and the associated morbidity. Uh, this uh, program was started in areas with uh, eye infections. These, are, these were actually the initial the, um, provinces where the, the infection rates were more than 20%. This was Nyanza, Western uh, coastal province and part of Rift Valley. But despite all this, um, the program is faced by a number of challenges that even when people are dewarmed, they get frequently reinfected. The program is uh, based on school programs, but it doesn't take care of the other people in the community. Uh, there's growing evidence showing uh, drug resistance um, to the drugs being used. Um, uh, even after um, the warming, the, the environment which, in which these people live is not taken care of. So the people still get contaminated by the soil where they live, soil water and other parameters. And there's also that possibility of uh, transmission through zoonosis. So the study, um, this study involved collection of uh, recruitment of patients or participants. You can see the features there that my colleagues were, were recruiting patients or participants, they collected samples and the samples were analyzed uh, partly in the field. This is in the, in, the, in the field and partly in Cambry. So the results from this study indicated that um, there was quite high prevalence of uh, parasitic infection in the people. Uh, by, the mess, by the first method, which was done in the lab in Cambry, 57% of the people were infected with at least one parasitic infection. And by the second method, which was done in the field, cattle cut is mainly done on um, ailments. So they don't, they, it's not applied for protozoans. And uh, the prevalence was 32%. This range is actually in the range of that region because the earlier study that 
before the program started had um, um, a range of 50, about 53% infections. So from this study, we observed that in Amoeba histolytica, Dispar Moskofisky complex was the most com common, common infection with 32%. 33% followed by Tuturis tuturia. And by the both methods, they agreed that most uh, Tuturis tuturia was the most common infection. We also found um, Ascaris rubricoides in terms of helminths by Catocat and, and Fomoita concentration. We found Ancelostoma species or Nekita americanas, the hookworms. And interestingly, we found a few cases of uh, human infected with tinea species, which we think is most likely tinea saginata but we'll type that to be able to, to know the species. Um, uh, addition, we, we intend to type the Jadia rabia because we know some, some of the Jadia assemblages are known to be zoonotic, just to find out whether some of these uh, could be uh, infections from animals, as well as the hookworm species. Uh, there are hookworm species that are infectious in humans are, but originate from animals, particularly Ancelostoma selenicum, which comes from dogs. So from that study, we, we found out that women were more infected than males. And the age bracket between five and 14 was the most commonly infected uh, population. And the infection increased with age. And therefore, um, as our conclusion for this study, we found out that the infection of intestinal protozoan infections suggests that the conservancy of these people live in poor water and sanitation, uh, poor water, sanitation, and hygiene conditions. And the high prevalence uh, of elms in non-targeted population um, requires attention. This, this is to mean that because the, the, most of the programs are based on school going children, they leave out the, those, two are, those that are not in school or the adult population, there is need to focus on those neglected uh, or left out populations to have a whole uh, impact. Then the presence of the tenure species confirms the occurrence of zoonosis in the community. And therefore we recommend that the entire community is included in a comprehensive health and protozoan control program. Because as you have seen, and uh, uh, from the, even from the ministry point of view, that the, the control programs just does the warming or ailments, but does not uh, consider um, the uh, treatment of protozoans. And you could see the, the infections was very high in the community. The last study is the one on, one, is the one on the knowledge attitude practices relating to risk factors for zoonotic diseases in the Olesukut Conservancy using a one-year approach. And this was by Christina from the University of um, Elsa, Western University of Health Sciences, California, the US, and the other partners. So this study um, involved 15 of the 15 households out of the one or nine households in the community, and used a one health approach and participatory uh, epidemiology to collect data on people, animals, and the environment. And the goals for this was to highlight the major risk factors and their needs that perpetuate the transmission of neglected diseases prioritized by WHO and the, the Zoonotic Disease Unit. Uh, the study also sought to, to, to understand cultural norms specific to the conservancy residents. And lastly, tailor culturally sensitive and sustainable control strategies that will be recommended for implementation at the local level. For the CAP study, uh, the survey assessed the degree of the knowledge of zoonotic diseases, um, their transmission, treatment, and prevention, the attitude towards uh, the zoonotic diseases and practices and general behavior that impact on the risk of exposure. So the results, the result, the results show that uh, out of the out of the questions that were being asked. Um, uh, from the households that, uh, for example, the first question, do you, know, do you know these diseases? For example, anthrax, brucellosis, cystic, echinococcosis, rabies, tuberculosis, and trypanosomiasis. The second question was asking whether they know whether it affects people or whether they know it affects animals. And uh, they responded by 
showing that they knew most of these diseases, but a few people, uh, a few of them didn't understand that diseases like uh, cystic, uh, cystic uh, so, sorry, brucellosis, brucellosis uh, yeah, brucellosis, no, uh, cystic echinococcosis and uh, trypanosomiasis affected people. And um, they, they didn't know that uh, brucellosis and tuberculosis are also infectious in animals. So for the second part of the question was whether they knew what causes the, the disease, how the disease is treated, and how to prevent it. And it's clear that some of the respondents uh, did not know what causes the disease, particularly for anthrax and cystic echinococcosis. Others did not know how to treat it, uh, um, like trypanosomiasis, and how to prevent it. Um, so these are the responses that we got, the responses that we got from the, from the people interviewed. As part of group, uh, focus group discussion, we came across a, a goat that was infected with um, sonura cerebraris, uh, what I mentioned earlier, sonuriosis. It's uh, the level stage of uh, uh, tinea morticeps. And the local community called the disease there omilo. It's a very common disease in the area. Uh, people knew about it. And um, it causes uh, some severe um, uh, clinical symptoms in, 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 in sheep and goats. And with the permission from the, the owner of the goat, we were able to, to slaughter the goat and remove the, remove the, the, the cyst and use this as an example to, to, to train them on how the disease is transmitted and how it can be prevented. So this is a common disease according to the people in the area. And also our dog studies in the area show that um, this parasite exists in the, in the dogs, meaning that it's transmitted to the, to the, to the, to the livestock. And uh, one, 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 one thing about this disease is that every infected animal, the end result is death. So it's, it's a disease that causes serious economic losses to the, to the people. So from the respondents, they, they, they showed that they understood how the disease, some of the diseases were trans, being transmitted and prevented, like for example, diseases like, such as rabies. Uh, this was through contact with dogs, uh, sleeping sickness. Uh, this is uh, through sesefly. And they, they thought that the, the sesefly in this case were being brought by elephants, who, which live in the, in the conservancy. So the, the people had really clear understanding of the disease and the, the prevention. And this is a case of uh, uh, anthrax in, in, the, in the conservancy. So what we conclude from this, we conclude that there was limited awareness of zoonotic diseases, a limited understanding of the transmission routes. Um, uh, the, the people were most aware with diseases of, diseases of uh, higher consequences, such as rabies, because rabies causes death or diseases that cause high uh, livestock production losses, such as TB and brucellosis. There was inadequate uh, or improper water sanitation and hygiene in the, in the conservancy, and that people also lived with animals, that the presence of wildlife increased the risk of transmission. We, we, from this study, we were able to establish factors that contributed to the disease, uh, perpetuating the diseases, the zoonotic disease, and this included lack of access to clean water, lack of health, health education, lack of access to health care, lack of access to veterinary health care, and la lack of access to education. And therefore this study, this pilot study provided baseline data and identified adaptable, adapted control measures for the implementation of sustainable interventions. The proposed uh, combination of One Health and participatory Epidemiology could be used in other pastoral communities for disease control and prevention. Uh, towards the end, uh, some community uh, projects were initiated and uh, study with collecting of uh, rainwater. Uh, the Minister of Health pledged to, to, to construct additional dams for the, for, the, for the people and their livestock. The Minister of Health, through the Count Director of Health, 
uh, deployed a clinical officer and a, a, and a lab technician to the health center and also provided more equipment and supplies. Um, the county veterinary services implemented the control vector programs. And this is to, to control vectors that such as SESA and others, SESA fly and others, and also started the livestock, selective livestock breeding programs to increase meat and milk yield. Uh, a veterinary officer was also deployed in the conservancy to implement the vaccination programs and disease control programs. And um, a, a local ag agrovet is planning to start uh, a veterinary depot in, in, the, in the conservancy. Uh, the community recommended implementation of preventive measures against predators. This is the, by use of fencing and use of lion lights. And therefore, the intersectoral, intersectoral, intersectoral collaboration and community participation were critical to the implementation of these interventions. So I acknowledge the following, the director of the conservancy, the, the county officials from the Minister of Health, Veterinary Services and Water, and all the, the other group, uh, groups that uh, contributed to this work and uh, the people represented by these institutions. Thank you very much for inviting me to come and present this and for listening. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Doc, for a really nice presentation. I think it's very holistic uh, mm -hmm. what you are doing uh, within, within the conservancy. Um, I have a question, and I'm sure there will be questions from the audience as well. Yes. The first one, I see your final slide on the recommendations, yes. uh, almost like a little bit disconnected from from what from what you're doing, uh, which sort of speaks to how we approach um, health. Yes. So it seems like from the farmers or the people in the conservancy, they they, they worry about predators. Yes, they do. The livestock sector went for breeding programs. <laughs> yes. Um, and 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 there are clear you know disease issues as well. So what would be your comment on that? And the second question related to that is. You, you have done, I think, what we don't often do with One Health. We look for one disease like rabies, yes. but you have looked at multiple infections. And the NTD programs uh, that are looking to leave one behind and eliminate many of these NTDs are, are advocating for integrated programs. Yes. What, what, what would be your thoughts around integrating control programs for not just rabies, but also the helmets that you are talking about in this presentation? Okay. Uh, maybe I can answer this the first question. Maybe Ebert will help me with the second question. The first one. Um, the, the, the approach that we used or the approach that you are saying is quite important because even from the first slide, I mean, it's um, many people are doing research on, on their own. Like for example, uh, I come from Cambry. Um, Dr. David Odongo is from the University of Nairobi. Maybe they have a project there or others that we work with, but they, they, they do it on their own. But from our own approach point of view, we, we decided to, to look at the, the, uh, a quite large profile of diseases uh, at a go. And this, 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 from the economic sense of view, it also saves money. And it's able to, when we combine the data together, we are able to, to give, um, while a well-informed um, findings from this particular area. So I think the, the aspect of integrating many, many sectors working together uh, gives out a, a, good, a better outcome rather than opposed to people going on their own. Maybe Ebert could uh, answer the answer on uh, the first one. So the initial idea to create such a program was um, um, Everybody talks about One Health, but um, it is more or less a theoretical approach and we wanted a practical approach to see what is possible in a community and, and what factors can be brought together to do something in One Health. So uh, the first start, we started with uh, do a disease profile. We went in the community and asked them, what is your problem? What are the diseases? What do you know about the diseases? Do you know the transmission? And this is then part and parcel of the, of the outcome what was uh, just uh, reported. 
The problem we have only is that we had very little funding, so we had to do bit by bit, and that's why we wanted to do it all comprehensive, and that we have the data together and then go one step forward. Additionally, we approached in the authorities uh, in NAROC and the veterinary services and the medical services and asked them now, where do you come in? We want the One Health project, so you must come in. So they pledged what he has reported. They, they said, well, uh, the, the, the dispensary was underfunded, by, uh, uh, had not enough for personnel and the dispensary was not equipped very well so they stepped in then the veterinary people came in with uh, uh, um, providing as well personnel for the veterinary services and our idea was to use them community based that they live with the community and go around from time to time to have in to to do a kind of surveillance what is going on is an up and down are the diseases uh, um, periodical and whatsoever and um, this is the background of the whole thing. And we are still in midst of the whole thing. It's not finalized and we want to see and then do it on a yearly basis to see what, what can be done in so disease surveillance. Many thanks for that. Um, Leanne, questions online? There is one, one question online um, that is asking if you were able to comment on the extent of implementation of One Health at the um, county level. So how well um, One Health has been institutionalized within Norrock County. Um, and I know I'll, I'll address this to you, but I know we have a few yet in, uh, in the room. So maybe this could be a jointly answered question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this, this is quite uh, difficult for me to, 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 com to comment because this is actually the whole county. But particularly the area we are working on, we, the, the, the county officials, both in the Ministry of Health and the Veterinary Services have really supported us in implementing our project. But from the count perspective, I will be, uh, 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 it is very difficult for me to, to comment. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> the question is about the implementation of the One Health approach uh, at the county level. I would uh, say that, uh, is not optimum yet, but at Naro County, we have quite uh, a variety of activities that are going on under the One Health uh, approach, and uh, we are escalating that. And uh, we have some partners, Ilri being one of them, uh, in the various activities they are doing, and also some other partners like uh, the Red Cross CP3 project. So there are quite a number of activities that we are uh, performing with our One Health approach. And uh, we, we, we have had quite some collaboration with the health uh, component, um, including a consultative meeting to make reports uh, last week. And we would probably soon have a consultative forum to even escalate that further with ILRI as a host. So there's something going on with the health uh, one held that much. Okay, any other question? Comment? Yes. Yeah, comment. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Molinga and your team. Uh, my comment is that uh, you have looked at all the issues which touch on the One Health and you have brought them to the fore because I see in your presentation, the findings and recommendations, you look at water, you look at uh, animal health, you look at people, and it means you have brought the three pillars of the One Health together. And I think your findings, though it may not look very scientific, it may not look like conclusive, but it provides a very good baseline of what somebody can pick to address a one health issue in that particular area. So I think, uh, as you mentioned, it is uh, still work in progress, but I think it, we can learn from it that if I want to study helminthosis in, uh, in Narok and find the best way to uh, control it, you have brought all the uh, factors contributing to it. And I think that's a very important aspect. Thank you.